What's up, dudes and dudettes? This is just a quick tip, another quick tip from uh, from me, Jod. Um, well, before we actually begin, do you like that wallpaper? I love it. I I, I love it, and I have every right to use it because I made it. If you'd like to maybe uh, download this uh, wallpaper, I'll have a link in the description so you, you know, all of you Marvel fans or Captain America fans, or, you know, if you're patriotic, then go ahead and download it and use it. It's really beautiful to look at. You have no idea. Well, anyway, in this quick tip number three, what we're going to discuss is something related to Final Cut Pro 10, and it's actually a really helpful, useful tip that all of you will need to know eventually down the line of editing in Final Cut Pro 10. Now, this tip is probably one of the most Hmm, what can I say? That one of the most important tips that you'll ever learn, that you'll ever come across if you're editing on Final Cut Pro 10. Now, basically, let me uh, explain what the tip is and how it's going to help you. Now, in this tip, basically, it's going to help you select which events you want to help uh, work on and which ones you don't. Also, which projects you want to work on and which ones you don't. Because by default, Final Cut Pro 10 opens up every event that you have. So let's say you have maybe 15 events and um, you open a Final Cut Pro 10. Okay, great. It opens up every event on every hard drive that you have connected to your computer your MacBook, your Mac Pro, it doesn't matter. So basically, it opens up every event and it opens up every project. Now that comes quite in handy and it's actually a really good, I guess, invention that Apple made. But here's the thing. If you don't have a beast computer, if you don't have a computer that's super, if you didn't waste more than $2,000 in your computer, then you're probably, you know, you probably don't have all of the specifications in order to run Final Cut Pro 10 smoothly with all of the simultaneous appearances running in the background. So, you know, over time, if you keep on adding events, 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 and projects, and projects, and projects, eventually Final Cut is going to perform very, very slow, sluggish performance, rendering times, uh, your MacBook Pro might overheat, um, your Mac Pro might be screaming. Um, so basically, it's not as efficient if you don't have a great system. So I'm going to show you how to select which events you want to open next time you open a Final Cut Pro 10 and which ones you don't. So I'm going to explain it and basically you're going to love the tip and I hope everyone takes advantage Okay, and um, you know, I if if you guys can, please spread this tip out, spread this video out because a lot of people, uh, you know, should come across this, and I I know it's in you know it's very handy. Okay, so let me get started. Again, wallpaper down below. Okay, so I'm gonna open up a Finder window. No, I did, and I'm just dragging it. So basically, let me click on my external hard drive, which is my Jody drive. And in here, notice the two purple highlighted folders. Now the first one is Final Cut Events. The second one is Final Cut Projects. Now by default, if you use Final Cut Pro 10, once you open up Final Cut Pro 10, you're going to have the availability and the, you know, the options of uh, storing your events in your Macintosh hard drive, in an external hard drive, in another one. It doesn't matter, but it places that folder wherever you want to store it on, and it creates it. I simple, uh, I simply just labeled it purple because you know it's easy to identify as you d probably did. Probably that's the first thing you saw. Anyway, it creates these folders, and based upon the events you create in Final Cut Pro, um, it creates subfolders. As you can see here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have ten events. Now, out of these ten events, only two are extremely heavy. This folder and this folder. Now, this is actually a show, and this has approximately uh, 300 gigabytes of just video. Now, that's that's pretty, that's a lot. And over here, um, there's about maybe uh, 200, 200 
And basically, every time I open up Final Cut Pro 10, say I want to work on Jody Helps Out, I only have maybe 20 gigabytes in this folder. Well, next time I open up Final Cut Pro 10, it's not only going to load this, but also this and all of these. Thus, the computer is trying to read everything, display it for me, and it's going to be very slow. So basically, I can't really edit <laughs> as efficiently as I wanted to because it's opening up unnecessary projects. So there's a really good workaround around, you know, a workaround so you don't have to have everything open. Now also, take notice here in my projects. It says Final Cut Pro uh Final Cut Projects. And here, um in the old Final Cut Pro 7 uh you know, uh program, there were sequences and in this program Final Cut Pro 10, they're called projects opposed to sequences. So also in Final Cut Pro 10, all of your projects are opened up and formed into a list. So you could choose which one you want, but that results in sluggish material. Let's say you have 5 sequences or of the in the same of the same project and you want to scroll through maybe uh, project number 1, it's going to be really slow because, you know, it's going to have to load everything. So I'm not going to open up Final Cut Pro 10 right now because it's probably going to crash my computer. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open it just with one event. Okay? Okay. So here's how you do it. It's my phone. Okay. You're going to have to create two folders. Now the first folder, I want you to title it and make a new folder and title it Final Cut Events Not In Use. Okay? Do that for that. And then remember, label it purple, so it's easy to see. And also, I want you to create a new folder and title it Final Cut Project Not In Use. And again, highlight it purple. To make a new folder, it's uh, Command-Shift-N to make a new folder. And just type it in. Okay, great. Now what you're going to do, it's actually really simple. All you have to do is choose the events that you don't want to use. So in this case, I'm going to choose everything but Jody helps out. Okay, great. All you have to do is drag these to the Final Cut events not in use. Okay, great. Now if we go back, only Jody helps out is there. Now let's go down to projects and let's say I just want to work on, hmm, let's say, I don't want to work on any. I want to make a new sequence. All you have to do is you drag these to Final Cut projects not in use and just let go. So next time you open up Final Cut, you're going to have only the Jody Helps Out event, but you're not going to have any projects available. Now you might ask yourself, uh, are you risking deletion of events here? You know, maybe media offline? No, you're not. Because if you were, you would have to have a basically a uh, another little finder window that states that it's copying files over to this folder but it's not you're simply moving it that's why it's super fast to you know move things around especially if they're on their if you know they are in the same location so that's that so let's open up Final Cut Pro 10 and let me show you okay so it's opening up now you know uh, let's see how long it took whoa that was pretty quick okay let me uh since I have dual displays, let me make it into one display. So, revert to original layout. Okay, cool. Now, as you take notice, I only have my Jody Helps Out event open. So, you know, I have quick tip number two, and, you know, this is quick tip number three, by the way. So, yeah, that's that. And if you want to make a new project, make sure to click on the drive you want your project to be stored in. In this case, Jody Drive 1. I'm going to create a new project. So let's title this Quick Tip Tip Number 3. I'm going to edit this video that you're watching here. So click on OK. Super. Now notice Quick Tip Number 3 and if we go back to our projects we're going to have Quick Tip Number 3 available. And since I have no media, of course, nothing's going to display. So let's quit Final Cut Pro 10 and let's check our finder. Wow, there it is. Final Cut Projects quick tip number three. Now let's test it again so I could just show you. Let's drag this to a Final Cut Project not in use. Okay, now let's open up Final Cut Pro 10. Sweet. Alright, as you can tell, 
there are no projects available right now that only my Jody Helps Out event. So let's quit it again and let me give you a warning. Warning time. Warning time. Every time you make a, um, a change here in your finder window, let's say you want to drag this here or drag a, uh, you know, a Final Cut event uh, that's not in use to the Final Cut events folder, don't do it when Final Cut Pro 10 is open. Always, always, always do it when it's closed. Why? Because your system is going to have to read both things at the same time and it's not going to inter, you know, it's basically unnecessary intertwinedness, I guess. So keep that in mind. Always have Final Cut Pro 10 closed whenever you move stuff around. Okay. Now let me give you guys, uh, I guess, the overall summary and I guess synopsis of this whole tip. So basically, whenever you work on various projects, on various events, and you need speed, or you need basically, you know, isolation of events. Let's say you're working on your kid's birthday party or uh, someone's baptism or something like that, but you have other events that are open as well that are unrelated to that. Let's say it's a short film and there's a lot of material over there. It's best to have that hidden and inactive. That way you could concentrate and edit really quickly your son's birthday party. Get the point? I think you got the point. So anyway, uh, this was quick tip number three. I know this video was pretty long, but once you get this tip, it's going to save your life. It's going to save time, and probably well, actually, it's probably going to even save your uh, laptops or your Apple computers' life in general. Because Final Cut Pro 10 is a great program if you understand it, and I know all of you have the potential to understand it because it's really super easy. And once you get it. Whew, you could do a lot of things with it. Anyway, this was quick tip number three, and if you do have any questions, make sure to leave a comment down below or send me an email at cupofjody. No wait, cupofjody at gmail.com. So this was this tip, and yeah, I'll see you next time. And next time, it's gonna be uh, a cool tip also in Final Cut Pro 10 that all of you should know as well. Okay. See you later. Until next time, make sure to watch my past two videos. Alrighty.